All right, after last night's political earthquake, a lot of people are saying, remember, some have been predicting the Tea Party's dead, even though there had been a lot of success, success actually, this uh, election year. There was a big battle. I know the Tea Party patriots were very active, very involved in what's happening in Mississippi. And at the end of the day, well, Chris McDaniel didn't get the 50% needed to avoid a runoff, but he did get the votes necessary uh, to defeat incumbent Thad Cochran. Now, this race, like a lot of other races, is pretty much establishment versus the more activist, conservative Tea Party member wing of the uh, Republican Party. Uh, you know, I've always been very, very reluctant to endorse in primaries. Very reluctant. And um, I decided to get into this race and support Chris McDaniels because I see him as a solid conservative. I looked at his legislative success. He's been in the Mississippi State Senate for six years, and he's fought for his constituents, the people of Mississippi, and uh, he believes in constitutional rights. He wrote the Mississippi Student Religious Liberties Act of 2013. Uh, he believes in strong national security. He wants to secure our nation's borders. He wants to repeal and replace Obamacare. He's pro-life. Uh, he believes in the Second Amendment, and the list goes on. That's why I got involved. Now, people kept asking me, who do you support? And I gave an answer. I don't like to tell people in other states how they should vote, but I think it's too important that we get reinforcements from Mike Lee and Rand Paul and Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. That's why I'm supporting Jack Kingston in his race in Georgia. He's a solid conservative, 97% rating from the American Conservative Union. Anyway, Chris McDaniel, who's up against this uh, runoff against the incumbent, Ed uh, Cochran, is on our Newsmaker line. How are you? Doing well, Sean. Thanks for having me. Thank you for the endorsement as well. It's an honor. Well, you know, it's pretty interesting to me that on the day that Eric Cantor lost, that your opponent, who's a pretty establishment guy, Fed Cochran, actually went out there and started saying that you were an extremist. Yeah, a very unusual statement from him, considering the fact there's nothing extreme about a balanced budget. There's nothing extreme about following the dictates of the Constitution. I mean, after all, I'm a Reaganite, and uh, I don't see any extremism there. I see Americana there. I see patriotism there. And frankly, I'm proud to be a conservative, and I'm not going to apologize for that. Well, let me ask you, because what is the difference? What would be the difference between you being the senator from Mississippi and Thad Cochran, who's currently the senator from Mississippi. Well, Senator Cochran has never met an expansion of government he didn't like. Whether it's the bailouts, whether it's carve-outs, whether it's uh, raising the debt ceiling 11 times over the last 13 years, he's voted for higher income taxes, higher gas taxes, higher internet taxes. If you can imagine a, a Republican that wants to expand the size and the scope of the central government, that's who Thad Cochran is. I am not that guy. And furthermore, Sean, Senator Cochran hasn't led a single charge against Barack Barack Obama. And that's truly unfortunate because Mississippi is the most conservative state in the republic. It deserves the most conservative senator in the republic. And this president is, uh, is frankly the worst president we've had in our history. And it's time that someone said so. And it's time that we stood and defended conservative values against this liberal agenda. See, I'm worried if we don't have a dramatic shift, a dramatic change in the country and our trajectory, we're headed for, we're, we're, we're in real trouble, but we're headed for even worse trouble. I mean, when you have 50 a, million Americans out of work. You have 50 million Americans rather in poverty and on food stamps and the lowest labor participation rate since 1978, 17 trillion in debt, 100 trillion in, in unfunded liabilities. And this is what frustrates me. And I, I, I look at these guys and they run in Washington and they say all the right things and they're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. And then when they actually have the opportunity to join somebody like Ted Cruz, everybody gets mad at Ted Cruz for doing the very thing that they themselves said that they were going to do when they were running for office. That's Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and Senator Cochran did the same thing. He voted to fund Obamacare twice. What we have to do as conservatives, we have to learn to fight again. We are a party of bold colors, not pastels. We have to be warriors. We have to have courage. And if we will stand for conservative principles, principles and values, I promise you the people will follow. What we need is a positive vision for our future, and we know what that is. The Constitution is a roadmap to prosperity, for jobs, for a better economy, for a better future for our children. Now is just the time to stand, draw a line in the sand, and say no more. No more surrender, no more compromise. It's time to defend our way of life. You know, I keep talking about conservative governors, and I'm looking at Rick Perry, and I'm looking at Rick Scott, and I'm looking at Bobby Jindal, and I'm, I'm looking at Scott Walker and Nikki Haley and Susanna Martinez and John Kasich and a bunch of others. And, and by the way, not all of them are perfect, but all of them have had to put conservative principles to work 
and in each and every case, to a very large extent, they've been they've been successful for their states because conservative principles work. And yeah. I, I look and I watch and I observe and I see that all of them have taken uh, deficits and they've turned them into surpluses. All of them have significantly dropped the unemployment numbers in their state. And all of them are giving more money back to the hardworking taxpayers of their states. And then I, I watch the guys in Washington and they... You know, four years into Obamacare since it's been passed, and, and they don't even have a consensus plan alternative for the country. That they're saying, if you elect us, we'll do this. They don't have a well, plan to get the country on to on a path towards energy independence. They don't have a plan that's going to balance the budget. I like the penny plan myself. They don't have a plan to secure our borders. Look what's happening in states like Mississippi right now and yeah. states like uh, Arizona and Texas. They don't have a plan for school choice. I mean, kids kids graduate school dumber than when they went in. Well, that's part of the problem. We have a group in Washington that are more concerned about self-preservation and getting reelected than they are doing the right thing. We know what works in this country. Liberty and freedom always works. The Constitution always works. Balanced budgets. It's a matter of common sense governance. And we haven't had common sense in Washington in a long, long time. But, Sean, you're right. Uh, it's, a, it's simple. The, the, everything that else this country is very, very simple. It boils back down to basic fundamental principles. And if we'll get back to basic fundamental principles, we'll see success and prosperity. All right. I have the conservative solutions 2014 and i kind of reduced it now down to five things that i want the conservative movement to now stand for and i you notice i use the word conservative and not republican I'm, i have noticed that that very prominent conserv uh, republican names in your state are coming out against you and i know that they're throwing a lot of money against you and i know the establishment is now against you and i assume it's going to get pretty ugly between now and and june 24th when this runoff takes place but you're right i've never seen Thad Cochran is a guy that's leading the charge. I mean, he's bragging about how much bacon he's bringing back to the state of Mississippi. And I, while that might be important for Mississippi, I'm more concerned about robbing our kids' piggy banks with deficit spending. And, and that goes for any senator. I, I, I want Chuck Schumer. Can you imagine the senators I have? Can you imagine? I have a governor that doesn't even want me in my home state of New York, you know. It's pretty pathetic. Um, what are your top five agenda items, and how do you get there? Oh, that's really easy. It, it's a combination of basic fundamental principles, but the first one has to be a complete repeal of Obamacare. It's just common sense. What do you that replace means, it with? You replace it with fundamental principles and common sense. Here's what it boils down to. There are at least four Republican plans right now that are being debated in Washington. It's time to coalesce around a more free market approach to health care, whether that be portability, uh, whether that be competition across state lines, whether it be additional tort reform. Focus on free market principles, and you'll see the answers to everything that else in this country. Uh, secondly, we've got to have term limits, Sean. It's time. Uh, these career politicians are bankrupting this country. We have to shake up Washington, D.C. Third, I would love to see a balanced budget amendment. I'm tired of hearing politicians tell us they're going to balance the budget. Would you support, the, would you support the penny plan? I'm sorry? Would you support the penny plan where you cut one penny out of every dollar government spends? Yeah, why not? It's a common sense approach that scales back the size and scope of government and gives us more control over our lives. I support any plan that reduces the scope of government and gives back to people their power. The power belongs to the people in the state, Sean, not to the central government. All right, so so give me your other two items. A couple of more. We have to have a tax reform across the board. The idea that there would be marriage penalties or parent penalties or even a death tax. That death tax needs to be repealed outright. The entire income tax code is offensive. It's 3.8 million words long. It's 60,000 pages long. We have to reform the entire thing, and that includes the corporate income tax rate, which is the highest in the uh, in the world. And uh, and lastly, we've got to end corporate cronyism. No more bailouts. The people of our state need stability and opportunity and predictability, and they're tired of watching these guys make these connections in Washington and get special treatment and special perks. So we want to end cronyism across the board and bring regulations under control. We are over-regulated. We are over-taxed. Hence, we are overburdened, and it's hurting productivity. Mississippi just wants its liberty back, Sean. That's all. Yeah, I hear you. All right, Chris uh, McDaniel, thank you for being with us, and uh, we're going to watch the race closely. And when it thank gets, you. when the establishment crosses a line, and they're going to, we're going to be all over it because I'm a little tired of the attacks against conservatives as they make their case for limited government and greater freedom and a return to constitutional principles. You know what? I'm getting a little frustrated by the whole process. Anyway, eight hundred nine four one Sean.